Hello, my name is Trevor Neal. Thank you very much for inviting me. I've been a trader for all of my working life. I started more than 40 years ago when I was 18 as a floor trader for Merrill Lynch on the Coffee Exchange. I've since worked for various institutions, moving towards uh, fund management and hedge fund, running hedge funds. And now I uh, run a small fund, which is a systematic trend following technical fund. Uh, and I also teach technical analysis. I've uh, got, had a long career in finance, as you can see I'm very old, so, <laughs> so I'm very experienced, but that comes with a long time. But uh, I've, I've lived through some interesting things, crash of 87, I mean that was very memorable, And uh, um, but I think that uh, probably the, the big experience was later in my career. In, the, in uh, 1997, I went back to the floor of life. I'd worked at a bank as a, as a fund manager and I returned uh, to the floor of life and I was in the Bund pit, the German government bond, 10-year government bond pit, and uh, this, uh, this pit at the time was the biggest uh, trading pit in Europe. Um, it had uh, more than a thousand traders in it. It was awesome thing to behold. Um, particularly, I would say that if you're waiting for some figures like non-farm payroll, you've got a thousand people absolutely silent, just waiting and looking at, at above for the news. And as a number comes out, the explosion of activity um, uh, that followed that was quite something to behold. And definitely for something that a little bloke like me had to get out of the way of, because there were lots of big people <laughs> running about <laughs> and shouting like mad. That was, uh, I would say, there's nothing like that. Uh, when I left in, um, in uh, 97, uh, I remember saying, you know, one day this won't be here, and people said, oh, some, that won't happen. And, but it was only a year later, and it wasn't there, and it didn't look like it at that time. It was humming, it was terrific at that time. So I feel honoured to have been part of that part of the history of finance. I've always been biased towards being bullish of gold which has held me in quite good stead. I try as a technical analyst to not have these feelings uh, about things and fall in love with things or hate things or anything like that. But um, uh, gold, I, early in my career, I had quite a big involvement in, in gold. I had some clients that were big in gold. And so I got to learn about it a lot. And uh, I saw how it comes into its own in cer at certain times. And then, of course, it's, at other times, it simply becomes a good conductor of electricity that doesn't rust. It's just a metal. But other times, it's something special mm. that we really love. And it's a way that, uh, that we express our fears about uh, things. And, um, and so I've sort of had this understanding with gold and this uh, good relationship with gold. And I've done well you know, with gold, uh, trying not to treat it in any way special because everything is just another market. It should be like that, but I, I do like it. The worst trade I ever had was in 1987, following the crash of 87. And um, I, it wasn't the crash itself, it was in the middle of the week following. And I was very short of uh, a bo treasury bond straddles and strangles. I was short of options in those. And oddly enough, uh, it, despite the collapse in the stock market, the bond market hadn't moved. And, but then the Federal Reserve, in order to release uh, liquidity into the market, because there was a liquidity crisis, they lowered the broker loan rate by two and a half big figures. That exploded uh, the, the bonds, and I was on the wrong side of that. I personally lost one and a quarter million dollars in that in one day in that day and that was when a one and a quarter million dollars was a lot of money and and uh, and that was the worst trade I've ever had. If I were to start all this again I would um, I would have bought more gold <laughs> earlier and when it, because when I started in the market gold was at $45, $48 an ounce and so that was a very good place to buy gold uh, but I've always been um, very um, welcoming of new things and I think that's held me in good step instead and so uh, technological advance I'm no Luddite about that I like computers I think computers have got a great place in finance and um, everything is inevitably going to become more computerized and I'm part of, of, of that and all my work is done by a computer these days cryptocurrencies uh, blockchain all these sort of things they are the future that's for, that is for sure there's no point saying it's not going to work or it's criminal or something like that. This is a good thing that is going is, uh, is to change how we operate in the future.
My investment approach really is to is to think about how we can see data better, and and because it, these days it's inevitable that we're going to get more data, it's going to come at us faster, and we're going to have to uh, analyse it quicker. And it's getting more difficult to do that with traditional technical analysis uh, methods, with x and y axis and daily bars and candlesticks and things like that. It, they're just not up to the job. We've had a number of revolutions in charting. We had charting on paper and graph paper and pencils and things like that. Then it went on to computers. Then we became more systematic. But even that is not good enough for what's happening now. We're getting more of it, and and we have to understand it. So I think the the next stage, which I'm very much involved with, the relative rotation graph is one example of that is to see complicated data simply so that we can use this computer which is really good at, uh, at analyzing this but it's complicated and a lot of data in one picture but easy to understand and that I think is, is the future and the problem to be solved by people like myself thinking about it and many other people about visualization of data in a clear form that we can use. I think uh, talking about the stock markets for, as one thing, I think stock markets will remain strong. I think uh, go governments are determined for that and central bankers are determined on that and are still managing to do that and will continue to do it. I think the lead will move from the United States where it's clearly been and uh, has dominated and I think there'll be a shift towards the emerging markets because their tools are not yet blunted. They can still lower their interest rates a lot because they're at relatively high levels and, uh, and they can lift themselves out. So I think that uh, emerging markets, junk bonds, junk uh, emerging bonds are probably the big uh, opportunities of this year. But we will still continue to have a, a strong dollar. Also I think because of my idea that, uh, that we're going to have this more risk on attitude, I think commodities will bounce uh, strongly as well and they've been very much bombed out, uh, the energy sector and, and, uh, and the, uh, the agricultural commodities and I think they can recover uh, strongly. So that's where I think it's going to lie.